having so much. Isn't that true? Okay. Amen. So much as far as so well. God giving us so much bountiful um, revelation. We are alive. Okay, welcome to God is in the house. I hope you have a nice warm a cup of coffee or tea or, or, tea or a, a glass of water, whatever it may be, because we're having fellowship around the table. And I hope you're having fellowship around your table as God is in the house. Whatever, wherever you are, God is in the house. And, uh, and it, wherever you are, the sun is in the room. So we call this the sun room. Um, <laughs> S-O-N room. And we have lots of sun too because we have a lot of glass over there. And when we built this thing as a chapel or as a house church or, or as, as a, a multi-purpose room. Yes. <clears throat> I, I prefer to call it a multi-purpose God is in the house room. <laughs> Holy Spirit is welcome here. Yeah. And so are you this day. This is April the 15th. And uh, we have moved into another Hebraic calendar month. Yeah. And it's called IR. Are you... I are ready for this. Are you? Are <laughs> I are ready for this? <laughs> you had to know something like that would be coming. <laughs> are I are ready for prayer? Are you ready for prayer? Huh? <laughs> yeah. I want you to know, I R is the month of the Issachar, Amen. the tribe of Issachar. In other words, the intercessors of Issachar. Now we did a write uh, a writing on the intercessors of Issachar. Years you can go to our uh, years, and years. years ago, and it's and it's timeless. It's great. Uh, you can go and download it. You can print it out, and has it. It has a lot on in it. And you want to do some updates? That's great. But the intercessors of Issachar, and um, the, the other exciting thing about the intercessors of Issachar is that each, um, <laughs> pardon me, each uh, tribe would have, like the tribe of Judah, like we just came out of the tr month of Nisan. So what was the emblem for the tribe, tribe of Judah? Anybody? A lion. The Lion of Judah roars! Hallelujah! Hey? Anybody want to take on a lion? <laughs> Especially the Lion of Judah with a big mane. You know, he's kind of like Dougie. Our little puppies. My, mom, when he's all furry, he looks like an Ewok. But <laughs> I tell you, but he wants the high ground. He always wants to get on the high ground. And he'll sit there and watch. Because as far as he's concerned, uh, he may be small, but he thinks he owns everything. <laughs> Well, I want you to know in the kingdom of God, we may be small, but our our God, our king, uh, the, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, <laughs> he wants us to advance his kingdom through us, his sons and daughters of the Most High. And what does that mean? Do we have ownership of anything in, in the kingdom of heaven? Do we have any ownership of anything joint, in the kingdom of heaven? Joint heirs. We're joint heirs with Christ. That's right. And the devil knows it. And we can, and the anointing is ours. Hallelujah. You know, and the and the spiritual gifts are ours. I are ours. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't. I'll play on words. I've been working on this this afternoon. Anybody know what the uh, what the emblem is for I R? Well, I bet you you can tell us. Well, yeah, it happens to be a donkey. It has happens to be a burrow. That makes sense. And, and in car. some languages, they call it an ass. Mm -hmm. The burden bearer. It's a burden bearer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, you got your whacker out already. Just in case, <laughs> just in case you know. I'm just saying, we're just having a cup of coffee and some friendly conversation around IR. And uh, did you know that a burden bearer or a donkey or an ass or a burrow can carry how many more times its weight? Several. Oh, quite a few. You yeah. know, they they can they can uh, build up the sides of the. Mm -hmm. uh, they can they can they can put up. Uh, you know how you put your hands up and praise. You know and and uh, you know and and how you put your. How, how much can you hold when you put your hands up like this? It's like a funnel. How much can you take of heaven? Hey, hey! How much? How much of the weight and the glory of God can you take when God pours it up and say, "Here I am, Lord. Let your presence fall on me. Let your glory be upon me." Well, I want you to know, 
the IR or the Issachar, the intercessors of Issachar, which are one of the tribes that went up in front, they were fighters too. They, they had to be at the point. They were fighters, the, not only prayer warriors, but also in the physical. Tribe of Judah, yeah, they were warriors, but they wanted Issachar right there. They wanted their buddies. They wanted them guys that could fight fast and have spiritual revelation. Did they have an emblem? Issachar? Yeah, a donkey. Oh, that's their emblem. Yes. And you know Samson took the jawbone of an ass, and you know how many Philistines and everything he whacked with the jawbone of an ass? Have you ever seen a jawbone of an ass? I have. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. it, the, you can take. I actually, I actually held one that a, that a person had taped up, and it is a formidable weapon. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it it's scary. Mm -hmm. It is scary. You know, uh, uh, I. Uh, anyway, so the intercessors of Issachar were scary. Prayer warriors are scary. <laughs> to the devil! <laughs> Let the jawbone of your ass be released Amen. and taken out the enemy. Let the voice of God come out of you and the prayer warriors be released because you carry ten times your weight. Mm -hmm. Ten times your weight and the glory of a burrow. And you know some burrows have wisdom. Do you, do you know of any donkey that had some wisdom and could see angels. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, in the in the story, and I think it's in Genesis. It's kind of cool. You know, uh, uh, there was a prophet on on the back of this donkey or this ass, and but the donkey could see the angel. Isn't that true? Amen. And I think it was Balaam, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Balaam. Balaam for sure. Yeah, Balaam. Um, are any of you in a place where you're? Not following the voice of God, like Balaam was. We would hope not. Well, I hope not, but if not, if you are not following the voice of God, find yourself a good ass, I mean a good burrow, and a good donkey to get on that has the eyesight to see the angels, because there's an... You know, we had it prophesied in church on Sunday that we would be entertaining angels, that we would be amongst the angels. We have been. Yeah. I know. Angels, you know, right? so and hey, yeah, yeah. So not only could the donkey speak, not only could the donkey see the angels, but also <laughs> the donkey was protecting this prophet who was going in the wrong direction at the right time, being on a donkey. Mm -hmm. So if you're going the wrong way, <laughs> find yourself a good intercessor from Issachar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That can put you on the right way. Hey, isn't that? <laughs> Even well, did you like that back? You like it back there, eh? Where's so where the, the tribe of Issachar? Where are they in the earth today? Well, and that's just it. It needs to be, you know, they, that <laughs> we track all the tribes. Isn't yeah, that? well, the tribe of Issachar, you'll find them very, very close, uh, just a little bit to the northeast of. Uh, uh, of Jerusalem, there's an area up there. Oh. Okay, yeah. up it is their area. I uh, anyway, did you have you got it? Northeast. It's kind of, if I if I remember correctly. You know, anyway, so okay. it, it, it's oh, yeah. So it's, it, isn't it interesting that the tribe of Issachar is so close to the city of peace? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the city of peace, Jerusalem. Yeah, and it says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. And I think that's in Psalm 122.6. The intercessors of Issachar were there. Amen. Now, prayer is awesome, especially in this IR time, because revelation is being poured out. Okay, so we are in that place receiving from heaven not only revel revelation but the transformation of God's voice through heaven through us to speak that revelation in the times and seasons that are now. Okay, and the other exciting thing is this particular time the Father says, Be prepared to receive your reward. 
This is a time of receiving the reward from heaven, especially for healing. So I, uh, we, I pray right now, all and everyone, just lift up your arms and say, I receive my reward Amen. from the voice of God Amen. from heaven, Amen. and I receive Amen. my healing yes. from heaven. I, as the glory falls down from the voice of God from heaven, I receive my healing healing because I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I have the Holy Spirit within me. I am sealed and I have faith and I believe and this is the time that the Lord has made and this is the day that I receive my healing and my reward. And whether that is a physical healing or a financial healing or if, whether it is a healing that is necessary just for emotional reasons right now because of all this difficulty that's in the world for the last year in regards to discouragement of this COVID-19, we say death to that in Amen. Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And we say, Amen. let God arise and his enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How you doing there, Shannon? Are you shake, rattling, and rolling down there in Pilot Mound? Are all the rocks being moved around in Pilot Mound? All the stones are being moved because... God's power is coming down there. I think you got her in the wrong place, but... Pilot Mound oh. or Pipestone? Pipestone! There we go, Pipestone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I knew it started with a P. <laughs> Already then. Okay, oh, uh, we'll go over to Leslie. She has a... She has... Well, just, yeah, there's a okay. couple of things. Okay. Well, I was going to yes. insert a little thing when yes. you were talking about uh, uh, receiving wisdom. Remember, it was an ass that spoke to Balaam. Yeah, it was. So, yes. don't disregard an unusual or an <coughs> unlikely person to receive prophecy from. Right? Well, and there Sometimes you go. Right. the Lord will bring you... That's true. A homeless bum. That's, yeah, uh, and that's yep. right. The angel that's... That we're Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Uh, amen. Mm -hmm. That is a good word. Yeah. And not only that... The Lord may bring you somebody that you are in a place that you have a prejudice against. That's mm. right. Yes. For, you know, he's going to confound your thinking. And uh, they say, you know, so be ready to receive. Be ready to receive. Don't let your heart be hardened from, it may be from a child, it may be from a teenager, it may be from somebody that you're the CEO of the business and it may be somebody that's bringing the mail in, a mail carrier, and you're saying, well, he's bringing the mail. If he's sitting on an ass, be sure you listen to him. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, if he's sitting on a bird, ow, 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 ow. It's a perfectly legitimate word. We have perverted its sense to mean something different. Correct. So it's a perfectly good word. Correct. Use it. I am, I are, and I'm going <laughs> to pass it over to... It. Yeah, it's when it's, it's viewed off. Yes. What? I, I'm... The beaten track. Mm -hmm. But yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Leslie is... We'll, we'll do a segue to Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Um, yeah, good to be back with everybody again. And um, I just got a couple of little inserts as far as, um, you know, mentioning prayer for people and so on. Sarah, actually, the um, our friend in NBC, she, um, we didn't get it brought forward last week, but um, she was wanting some prayer for that potential job transfer, the application for a transfer um, with Apple, the company, to um, either Fiji or uh, or Australia. And that's and, Natty Fiji. Yeah. 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 Well, it, was it for Nandi? Na or? Nan Nandi. Yeah. Uh, That's okay. where it is. Or or Suva. No, it's no. Nandi. Is it? I already okay. questioned. We okay. already went through that. Good. So that would be perfect if that was to happen. But God, you know, God's plan for her, and so, um, you know, Sarah had already applied for and been accepted into YWAM New Zealand. So, all of these things coming together, um, you know, the Lord. The Lord and his people around him, he does know the times and the seasons. Amen. And hence the, you know, the times of Issachar, knowing your times and seasons. And so um, we can just say that for Sarah, if the Lord, if this is the time and season, which things appear to be lining up that way, but if this is the time and season that the Lord has for her to be successful in that job transfer, 
um, and you know have help and assistance in moving to that part of the 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 world so that she will be closer to go into her YWAM um, in New Zealand, then it just sounds like God lining some things up. Amen. So we just want to come into agreement with God's plan for her. Amen. And we say, Lord, you you orchestrate all the details. Mm. And we thank you, Father, that you are the one who directs your path. Amen. And Lord, that you are the one who directs the path for any and all people seeking seeking after your, your direction and your will for their lives. And there's a, uh, there was a prayer request that also came for... Um, Brock, a fellow, you know, mm. from you know from our fellowship, um, in Brandon, who's uh, his brother, his house burned down, oh, and no. so um, we just pray for Brock's brother, and I'm not sure about family and whatever, but just for that, such a huge loss, you know, like so there'd be some grieving, but there'd be you know just a huge loss. You know, in the natural, but also, you know, emotionally and all of that stuff. So, furniture yeah, furniture, clothes, whatever, however much, and just, you know, um, a place to live, you know, in the you know, not so distant future. And, you know, where they, he and if there's family can be housed, can be housed um, well until that all is restored. Mm -hmm. So we just want to bring, bring them, you know, Brock's brother and his family. Mm -hmm before the Lord and we just say thank you Father. Thank you Father where, this, where there's such pain and loss and suffering and, and just what would seem like um, senselessness. Lord that you are the God of restoration. You are the God of healing and we send your healing word mm -hmm. to their hearts and even to the emotions God for the, for the whole soulless realm Father. We just send your word for healing and comfort. Holy Spirit, you are the comforter. So we send comfort and peace. And for Brock too, Lord, just, you know, just that there be a sense of comfort and knowing that you are there in the midst of them. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for you are a good and mighty God. And we bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to bring forward, um, there was just an insert here from years and years ago, and I ran across it just a couple of days ago, was about the um, the tribes of Issachar and Issachar itself. And, mm. and um, in First Chronicles 26, 5, the gatekeepers, talking about the gatekeepers. Um, so even Chronicles 20, First Chronicles 26, 1 to 3, also talks about the divisions of the gatekeepers. And, uh, you know, there was the son of Obed, Edom, and in First Chronicles uh 15, um, 18 and 21, the Levites and the worshippers and, and Obed-Edom, they looked after the south gate and his sons and the storehouse. And so Issachar was also the keeper of the storehouse. And uh, when you look at that, you know, there was four Levites on duty for the south gate each day and for the storehouse, and they were there two by two. Mm -hmm. And you think about, you know, for prayer partners, two, you know. Yeah. Two by two, let there be, you know, pr people that know the times and the seasons, praying together for these times and seasons that we're in currently. Um, and in Genesis 49, um, verses 14 and 15, talks about the burden bearer. And um, to, yeah, so in, in Deuteronomy 27, 12, was there was a, there's a command to bless the people and to stand for uprightness with God. Um yeah. So yeah, First Chronicles twelve thirty two. It says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, and we in our day we also, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, and 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 even as this month that we are in in the month of Iyer, that we would we would know the times and the seasons and and how to come into alignment with the Lord and what is He saying. Um, that we are able to discern the times in, in which we live and having the right perspective on those times and that we could see where they fit into God's plan. And it's, yeah, timing is everything. It really is. And so even there's a, an insert in this particular Bible that, and that's where I found this card that when I'd been studying, it's been a few years back before we ever moved here. Mm -hmm. um, and so... The um, the author for this insert says, The children of Issachar, 
who were able to discern the times in which they lived had the right perspective on those times and could see where they fit into God's plan. Because of this, they knew what Israel ought to do. So because of this, because of us being, you know, where we are placed in, you know, seated in heavenly places, we too will know what we ought to be doing. Um, so what was true back then is true today, as we we're just saying. And in order to know what to do, we must be discerners of the times in which we are li living. God's plan for humankind from beginning to end has been carefully laid out for us in Scripture. He describes in great detail what will take place in the earth from now until Jesus returns, and even on into eternity. We, we already know these things ahead. If we study Scripture, we can find descriptions of future events involving Israel, the church, and the rest of the world. From these descriptions, we can figure out approximately where we are in God's timetable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'll be going into more of that, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and this knowledge does give us a tremendous advantage because it enables us to get prepared for what's coming and gives us the directions as to what to do. Mm -hmm. In other words, we can know what to do and when to do it. Amen. And we need, in this day and hour, we need that more than ever to know what to do, when to do it, and mm -hmm. listen very carefully what the Holy Spirit's saying. Yeah. Amen. You know, we do want to be discerners of the times, not only God's plan for the world, but for our own lives too. And sometimes we understand the plan, but are off on the timing. And that could be a tragic yeah. occurrence mm -hmm. if we're not quite mm -hmm. on, the, on God's timing, you know. And so, yeah, so that's kind of a highlight there. And, um, no... I'm not sure if you, do you want me to kind of go into this just yet or no? Um, we'll wait soon, soon. Okay. Um, okay, so I think we'll do a flip back to... Yeah, just, we're, we're going to, um, Leslie spent about a couple hours or more in Revelation. So this oh. is the time of, she's an intercessor. People have known her for so long as an intercessor. So God was doing a download and she was typing it out. And we're going to go over that in a bit. And uh, uh, it's a bit radical. So it's a little radical in the sunroom today, S-O-N room. I think you'll all love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, this, this month that we're in, that we've just transitioned into, is an exciting month because um, God's, God's voice is speaking. Are we receiving? Are we healing? Are we healing and are we hearing? Mm -hmm. When I say that healing and and are we hearing? Because this last year, um, I was, you know, I was looking for my notes for last year. At this time, I keep notes, and I just remembered because uh, um, uh, last year I kept all, everything in blue, and uh, <laughs> so I keep things color coded. Uh, and uh, so, for you guys in Liberia that have my notes, <laughs> <laughs> if somebody does, if they do have the, my notes. Bless you and reach your will. Uh, uh, it seems to me I remember somebody grabbing them. But, but bless you. They can just take bless it. Bless you. And send it. But it's okay. I can, I, I, I can work on it. But I, 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 isn't it interesting, you know, like uh, uh, God's voice speaks. And it's interesting to write things down. And uh, um, this was written to me January 1st, 1999. So if you have a prophetic word, and part of this, uh, part of this uh, transition and hearing God's word and revelation and healing, but it's also, uh, this is the month of uh, Revelations 19.10. In other words, the spirit of prophecy. And, and, and it's also being uh, uh, of spiritual birthing. Ooh. Spiritual birthing and spiritual prophecy. Um, that, that, to me, that's exciting. Because it's one of my favorite scriptures in, in Revelations 19.10. For Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And his testimony is the spirit of prophecy. So when we speak that, um, it, it, when, we, when the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we love not our lives until our death, Revelations 11.12. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to speak our testimony. It's important to speak the testimony of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus. So this is something that was given to me by somebody uh, dear, dear and beloved to me. Uh, I'm going to pass it back to Leslie, okay? Because she wrote this to me. Oh, did I? She did. 
<laughs> so uh, can you just, when? she wrote me, now if you're going to write a word to the to somebody that you love, to your spouse, they're, I, I, I read this quite often, so and I just want you to read it again, and I want you all to receive what Mama Leslie has for you. Alrighty, wow. In the body of Christ. Well, already then, surprise. Um, yeah, I did not remember, but now that I look at it. So this, uh, yeah, I'll just, this says, Ray, you are called by my name. I have chosen you for such a time as this. There is a reason I continue to give you a forehead of flint. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I am calling you to a work, but this is still the preparation time. Be not impatient with that. In due season will I bring forth my purposes in you. When having done all, stand, stand firm, do not be moved. I am restoring unto you the years the locusts have stolen, but it is not without a fight. Remember, I am the Lord, strong and mighty, and I do battle on your behalf. Wow. Walk tall, walk in uprightness in everything that you do. Everything, um, it's like the cross, plus must be crossed and every, like every T, <laughs> Crossed and every eye dot must be dotted. Leave no thing undone, nor any stone unturned. Come into my resting place. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. I am the rock of your salvation, the Holy One of Israel, and I do not change. So come to me, my son, and I will take you to another level, a place that you have not yet been. I have set my I have set my walls and my fences around you, and at the appointed time I will open the gate. Oh my! I will send you out and bring you back. Send you out and bring you back. I will do it. I am the Lord. Huh? Wow. Well, that sounds wow. pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to pray that you've over seen, people right you've now? You've seen that come to pass. Yes. Well, and and I don't know it's even completed yet as no. I read it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know? uh, the That's voice true. of God, okay, a prophetic word, you know, again, Revelations 19.10, the prophetic voice or the prophetic, it's always alive, it's always speaking, and it's always yeah. in time, and it's always in date. And uh, hmm. for, so <clears throat> January 1, uh, 1999, um, that's an ex interesting time of where I was, okay, and India, Fiji, Okay, that's that's the times of okay. India and Fiji, mm -hmm. and uh, many many miracles were happening, and um, uh, God was um, it, it was amazing time, and uh, okay. uh, the, so a, a prophetic word brings life and continues to bring life. Mm -hmm. So any of you that um, are in a place right now where you feel dry, and you and you feel that you're being worn out or you feel that you're in a wilderness experience um i'm, I'm just going to pray that the lord bring rain mm. that that the heavens open up and bring rain to you in this season and in this time and the lord will bring you into a, a refreshing time a refreshing mm. acts three nineteen. it says repent for times are refreshing or near in other words that word refreshing is is the Holy Spirit being blown back into you for you that you become alive into the call that God has called you to be and to do in his name. And, you know, um, a prophetic word is precious. Mm -hmm. And I, I was reading many of them today. And uh, uh, so I, I looked at this and, and, uh, um, and it said, uh, remember, I am the Lord strong and mighty. I do battle on your behalf. And that is for each and every one of us today. Right. Uh, Jehovah Gabor, I am the mighty one. I am, I am not only, the, like, like, I am doing battle on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And um, so remember that I, I gotta remember. I gotta remember what God has spoken into me and, 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 to, and, and to you. God continues to speak. So sometimes it's good to write it down hmm. and, and to be in that place. So I'm going to take this part of the IR is, uh, is it's the time. Um, the intercessors of Issachar were known for their anointing. <laughs> well, they spent so much time in prayer. 
God just kept on pouring the anointing on them so that, yeah, they knew the times and the seasons. Okay, David wouldn't do anything without consulting the intercessors of Issachar. He, that, he, he wouldn't do... He, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably a good time for us not to do anything without consulting what God is speaking to us and what the direction is, and we stay and we stay on that way in that path, and mm -hmm. and especially in these difficult times. So uh, one of the other things, so they so they were they were known for their anointing. Now Christ is the anointed one. Christ is the Messiah, okay, which is the anointed one. So he is the anointing that poured down on the intercessors of Issachar, where the glory fell upon them when they were in, <coughs> well. Do you think they were an individual? Individually, you think they were praying, or do you think corporately they were praying? Both. 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 Yeah. And and probably they were they were mm -hmm. they were together as a unit. They were together as a tribe. Yeah. They were together not only on the battlefield if they if they had to use their swords and they had to use that, but th they were uh, on the high ground praying all the time, as Pastor Tunji preached on on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to have the high ground. So the intercessors of Issachar, they knew where to take the enemy on, and they would go to the high ground so that <coughs> uh, Joshua could fight the Amalekites on the low ground. Mm -hmm. But you have to take out the high ground. Yes. So the intercessors of Issachar are being called in these times to take out the altars of the high ground mm -hmm. of, the, of the kingdoms of this world. And the kingdoms of this world might be all the wrong kingdoms in the wrong places. Okay? And... Uh, we can go into that, but the other thing that uh, uh, that they were known for is revelation. So God is pouring His revelation right down to sons and daughters of the Most High, and we are part of that. So be write down the revelations, write down the prophetic words for people, and pass and pass them out. And I know that's one thing I haven't done very much. I, I speak the prophetic words, but for people and so on today, we can take them, which is good, but. Um, maybe I should be writing it down more for people. I'm going to do that. I, I used to, but I, I need to get back to doing it. So the, the other thing that um, that the intercessors of Issachar were known for is that they were a connector. They were uh, they were a conduit. Now, if Brock was here, and if you're an electrician, and if you're if you're trying to connect one source of power to another source of to another source of outlet, what do you need? Huh? You need conduit. You need conduit. <laughs> okay, so if you've got a if you've got a source of power and you're running it down to a, to an outlet, I'll I'll say I'll be an outlet. <laughs> okay, so if it's being running, if it's running down, Lord, would you wire me two twenty because I want everything I got, everything you got, wire me two twenty. You know, <laughs> yes, wire us two twenty. Wire us 440, whatever it is, wire us so that we would receive the anointing on high. Whatever it is that we would be filled in that power. So, it would, and, and so that's what the intercessors of Issachar were, is a conduit. They were a connector of, of what the revelation of heaven was, is, and always will be, to bring it to who? The beloved sons and daughters of the Most High. Amen. The, the other tribes of the... I wonder why the other tribes of Israel weren't getting it. Huh? They were busy doing other things that God called them to do, mm -hmm. right? And that's okay. So the intercessors of Issachar, their job was to get the in intel. What would you call those people today? Spies. Secret service. Yeah, secret service spies. Hey, would you call them secret service? Or else would you call them? Navy SEALs? Would you call them what? What? Intelligence. Intel? Intelligence gathering. Would, would Caleb and Joshua, who went into the promised land and saw the giants, and they came back with a report saying, we can take those guys? Mm -hmm. huh. The other ten couldn't see it. Do you, do you believe they got the right intel? Yeah. Do you think they had the right faith? Do you have the right faith in this time with the right intel that God is saying, you can do this in my name? Mm -hmm. So, and, and part of the healing... That's why I put this on. This this color of green is the intercessors of Issachar. It's the light green. Line of Judah is the bold, dark green. Okay? So this light green here, in this in, in, in this what? Cloak of many colors. Hmm. All right. Uh, and who got that? Joseph. 
Did he have a dream? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he get a revelation? Yeah. Was it prophetic? Yes. Did he have the right timing of God to give it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't have the right time, timing, seasons, you knew the times and the seasons. If you gave it out of time and the wrong frequency, you might end up in a pit, <laughs> a prosecution. That's what this, you know, prepare for the... Persecution. Persecution. Persecution and prosecution. Okay? Well, are yeah, are, you, are well, you going to be prepared for this? Because this color here is the color of the intercessors of Issachar. That's, the, that's the, that light green, this healing. It's, it's, it's healing. It's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed thee. I am going to bring healing from heaven to you in every source of healing that there is, that you need physically, emotionally, whatever it may be. So it, it, it's kind of interesting the quote of, and this this particular outfit here uh, is from Liberia and Ghana, and you can see all the, the coat of many colors that they have. Uh, if you if you go through an airport and you see somebody wearing these this here, everybody does everything that they can to get out of their way and to make sure that they're first in line. I wonder why. What what does the coat of many colors say? You know, to people that know what the colors mean. It's royalty. Mm -hmm. It's it's government. It, uh, uh, it's the ecclesia and the gate. Mm -hmm. It's the authority of government of heaven. Right. <sighs> Jehovah Shalom, Shalom, the God of peace, is every color, it's every fragrance, it's everything. But Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, is green. So you see the gold, you see the different things, and and uh, so timing is important. So that if we go to Exodus uh, chapter 15, based on, on, on this particular season and time of IR, um, and, uh, and, and, it, and you know, this particular time in Exodus <coughs> from verses 22 and on, it's the time of bitter waters. And uh, I don't know if you're in bitter waters right now. <laughs> I don't know if you've got bitter tears. I don't, it's, it's, so you need to come into a place of, of healing. Does that make sense? If, if you're in a place of bitterness in your heart, you need to come into a place of healing. And mm -hmm. whatever offenses you've been receiving, that you, that you have based on anything that has been coming your way, you need to have forgiveness. So... So in verse, uh, we're going to get to 26, but in verse 22, it says, Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and when they went out to the wilderness of Shur, um, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Okay, three days. Now, uh, when they came to Mara, uh, what does Mara mean? Bitter. Bitter. Oh. Have you been drinking Mara lately? Yeah. From Mizraim. Mizraim is, is Egypt. In other words, the slaves got out of Egypt. And, and after they walked for so long, they longed to go back to Mizraim. They longed to go back to the things, at least if I'm going to die, I want to know how I'm going to die in the pit, mm -hmm. in the slave pit. Mm -hmm. And they're getting you... How... how if, if you're drinking slew water, how long can you drink slew water before you die? Just depends how depends. bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're drinking Mara for a long time, Bitterness. when you get sweet water coming, might, you might choke on it. All I'm saying is that your body adjusts to what you're drinking, but you're going to be dying slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you're taking in the wrong stuff. So, okay, so, uh, so when they came to Mara, uh, they could not drink the waters of Mara and they, uh, because they were bitter. Therefore, it was, it was called Mara. And then the people complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Do you think this is, do you think this is close to the place where um, Moses smashed the rock? <laughs> Do you think this is in the same area where Moses uh, went and hit the rock 
when he was only supposed to speak to it to bring fresh water? Yeah, it's very close to that. I want you to know, uh, when you do this study, God took out the 10 major gods in, 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 in Egypt or Mizraim, and when they crossed the Red Sea, then God took the 10 major faults in human beings because there's 10 of them, and this is one of them, that the human beings kept on caming, coming out and coming to a place and not trusting God and cursing God and not having faith in God. What are you doing in this last year with all the difficulties that we're going through? I hope you're not being like the children of Israel and speaking against God. Mm. Because it took 10. They did it 10 times. and, and uh, Okay, so... So he cried out to the Lord, and, and, and the Lord showed him a tree. Uh, anybody know what kind of tree that was? When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Then he made a, a statue or an ordinance over them, and there he tested them. Anybody got anything different in verse 25? Well, this, well, the, this translation, which is the voice... It says, um, Moses then asked the Eternal for help, and the Eternal showed him a log. Moses threw the log into the bitter water, and the water became sweet. Okay. At Marah, the Eternal established an important principle and set a standard for his people so that he could test them. Does anybody have the name of that tree? I wish I had my Hebrew Bible. I, I should have had it out here. Okay. Anybody? No? Okay. All right. I, I want to say it, but I could be wrong. But we'll have to check it. I should I should have had that here. But and 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 he and it says, and there he tested them and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His communications and keep all His statutes. Is that any different to today? Do you think we need to walk in that same obedience today? I believe we have to. And there's a lot of different things that are bringing... Uh, uh, we're we're going to read a, a, a thing pretty soon uh, that God gave uh, Leslie. But <clears throat> I, I want you to know that we have to be in a place that we don't have bitter waters, okay, or, <clears throat> or we have a bitter spirit, <clears throat> okay, What's another thing that, uh, that, that's close to a, a bitter spirit? Anybody? Unforgiveness. Oh, yeah. unforgiveness. Yep. Complaining. Oh, my goodness. What's that? Complaining. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Bitter root judgments. Bitter root judgments. So yeah. bitter root judgments are connected to these bitter waters. And when, when the rain comes from heaven... It's what rained down on us with the sweetness of heaven, the sweet waters of heaven, right? Okay, so, and, and, and it says this, and I will put, and I will put none of the disease, what? I will put none of the disease on you. What have you got there? I will put none of the disease on you. This COVID-19, Jesus the Father, yeah. the Holy Spirit says, I will put none of this disease on you. Mm -hmm. Man may do it, and the devil may do it, but I'm not going to put any of this disease on you. Mm -hmm. Where does your help come from? And if you get bitter waters inside you, brings a bitter root judgment, and that bitter root judgment brings complaining. Oh, complaining. Oh, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, cold judgment. Remember I, remember I gave you the thermometers, cold slash J? In other words, I'm going to give you the thermometer of the, uh, the opposite of the fruits of the spirit is C-O-L-D slash J. C stands for critical spirit. Bitter root judgments, complaining, whatever. O stands for... My opinion is only the right one because God hasn't got it right yet. I wonder, could C stand? No, I better not go. C stands for COVID. C O. Uh, I, I, what I, is, I, I, plague? is that a coincidence? It's a plague. I, I'm just saying, is is that a coincidence? It's cold, 
slash J. Like COVID. Lois said, anyway, my, my I've already are, done a, I've already done an acronym for COVID anyway. So, but yeah, see, no, my, my, I'm thinking, I know Egypt. I'm thinking Egypt, right? Okay, but O is my opinion is only the correct one. And right now we're getting uh, based on all the different situations because of, and unless and unless you're going to read your thing right after this. In other words, oh my goodness, opinions, opinions coming from government. Opinions, opinions coming from man. Opinions, opinions coming from who? Who's the who? <laughs> Anybody know an owl named who? <laughs> who, who? What would Jesus do? Well, he sure wouldn't listen to who. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. W H O. W H O. World Health Organization. Who? No, because his healing comes from where? Heaven. It doesn't yeah. come from who? And the diseases. Okay. So okay. So I will put none of the, of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, right. which I have brought on the Mizraim. Are you Mizraim? Are you miserable? Are you got a bitter root judgment? And I. Do you not see what is happening here? And then it says, this, For I am the Lord that he, I am Jehovah Rapha. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the healer. I am the green. I am, look at, I am your healer. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's only one scripture. I just want you to know, God wants us to be connected to Jehovah Rapha. God wants us to be connected to the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire. And God wants us to be connected to the anointing, the anointed one, Christ the Messiah. <laughs> the intercessors of Issachar were a conduit. They were a connection from heaven at that time because we didn't have the Holy Spirit, but they were a tribe of warriors. Do you think we need to be warring in the Spirit? Absolutely, as intercessors, to take out the enemy, to take out everything. So in that, I'm going to do a segue. I've set this up for you in the sense that I'm just going to turn to you because the Lord gave a revelation and a word to Leslie here. And uh, just we'll just turn it to yeah, her. And if anybody wants a copy of this, you'll have to, we can send it to you an email or whatever. I'll, I'm still going to tweak some It's stuff. going to be tweaked a bit, but this is, this is hot out of heaven. Ah. This is hot off the press. It's hot yeah, out of the conduit. It's, it's an intercessor. And I want you to know, there's no Balaam that's on the, the delivery parcel of the intercessor of our Issachar, the donkey, that's bringing the good goods. The good goods. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have topples. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little bit of a preface here. Um, you know, there's... Uh, as the as this um, plague plagues us all, the so-called plague that it's being called like the coronavirus and all the variants and so on and so forth, um, the as it, it it actually the real plague is that it plagues us and takes away our freedom um, by the imposition of uh, restrictions and so on to the degree that it becomes harmful, more harmful to the health of people. Um, so, anyway, so the focus in this is, you know, t my focus here is, is, and that we would pray for freedom from the coronavirus and the demonic human persecutors mm. included, including but not limited to outdoor mask mandates or government restrictions against the freedom of choice and liberty. And that could be no matter where you live in the world that is, uh, you know, that there are these kind of things in place, but <coughs> certainly because it's close to us here. Um, and I want to also preface this thing, but before you pray anything, read it through, and if you're not comfortable with it, then you only go where, where Holy Spirit leads you. But also, always cover yourself with the blood of Jesus, and be sure that your armor is intact. And so then I'm going to also take this opportunity to put up smoke screens in the spirit that act as sight and sound barriers against satanic agents and evil spirits. And I will say that you are cleansed of all the filthiness of, and that is each person who would be involved with praying, um, filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfection, holiness in the fear of the Lord, bringing into perfection the holiness. Always be wise 
And um, so, yeah. But I also want to make a note that this customized prayer is, you know, it's bits and pieces, but it's been adjusted, some of the terms and some of the prayer points from Dan Duval's books, uh, Prayers and Advanced Prayers That Shake Heaven and Earth. So, now, now we can get into, you know, what's written, what's written here and what, you know, as the Lord leads, if I need to tweak something, I will. Father God, I want to thank you that you impart to us the authority from on high, and we can reference Ephesians 2, 17. Uh, no, it's actually supposed to be 2, 6, and 7, or 5 and 6. Anyway, <laughs> Ephesians 2, that we are, because we are, you know, we sit in heavenly places, you know, with Christ Jesus. So based on that authority, we thank you that we have the grace to move heaven and earth, Father God, we bring the issues of restrictions, including proposed or imposed outdoor mass mandate or mass mandates in general, as well as the imposed restrictions placed on the people of our country, our province, our local governments relating to the coronavirus or other such variants slash diseases. We bring this to you. We intentionally combine our intercession with the prayers of godly men and women, both past and present, who have prayed for the Prime Minister and his office for Canada and the province of Manitoba, as well as the local government and health authorities with the same heart and spirit. We also join our prayers with those of the cloud of witnesses and with the prayers of Jesus Christ, who lives to make intercession for us. We join our prayers as incense is released before, as incense released before your throne. And we declare that the heavens were made to give you glory and praise. And we were made to give you glory and praise, Lord. And we declare that evil assignments and programs seated in or imposed upon the cosmos or this nation, federal, provincial, municipal government, prime minister, premier, lead doctors at both levels are excised by the, word, by the sword of the Lord. We thank you that creation itself, the believers, and the not yet believers, will be delivered from the bondage of human persecutors and of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Therefore, we declare that our prayers restore the heavenly bodies to their first estate and that they would fight alongside of us in our kingdom assignments in heaven and on earth. We identify the gates of this nation, provinces, and municipalities, north, south, east, and west, as well as above and below. And we declare that the King of Glory stands in the gates and enters through them. King of Glory, have your way and direct your armies in this time of the crown virus along with the cohorts attached, including outdoor mask mandates as well as other restrictive mandates. We remove that crown on the head of the Queen of Babylon. We destroy it with the fire of the Lord in Jesus' name. We thank you that the gates of this country, province, municipality, and shall we also say the heads of public health and health authorities are occupied by your heavenly hosts and purged of evil occupancy. Amen. We establish conflict zones at every gate under the control and dominion of the kingdom of darkness or that, or that is being contested until that ground is taken by your armies the armies of the Lord. We thank you that evil gatekeepers and ungodly occupants are being overtaken and forcefully displaced by your angelic hosts. We decree that there are frequent and fresh angelic dispatches to, to, sorry, maintain. to maintain the territory at the gates of our country, province, municipality, and towns and cities. We decree that the gates of these locations are now becoming heavenly strongholds that are fortified and weaponized. We call the Ecclesia to, see, to be seated in the gates of these locations to legislate and judge in the spirit according to our identity in Christ. We thank you that confusion is being placed on all evil works going in and out. We thank you that the message of the gospel of the kingdom is continually declared and displayed at the gates for all who would receive it. We also declare that the gates are repurposed <coughs> to allow heavenly traffic into and out of nation, province, municipality, towns and cities in Jesus' name. And then there's a there's a like a shorter version, a much shorter version, and again 
you know, only if Holy Spirit directs you. And this is a, in here, I'm, I do want to tweak it just a little bit before I make it, you know, something more public. But, but, be, but it's a little bit shorter version of, you know, if that all above seemed a little lengthy. Lord, based on the power invested in us, according to Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, and your word in Isaiah 47, we tear down the hedge of protection around the Prime Minister, all associates federally, provincially, and those in places of authority that govern according to the bidding of Satan and the queen, or the queens of darkness. We send the blood of Jesus Christ and the fire of God to destroy and burn evil entities associated with them or with deception, manipulation, divination, doctrines of men, mind control, new age, occult practices, Wicca or witchcraft in Jesus' mighty name. So again, if you know if there's anything that you do not feel that you're okay with praying, then for goodness sakes, please don't. For some people, it might be into realms that you know you're not you're you know you're not comfortable with yet. But for those that are, then you know this can be tools you know in the hand in the hands of the warriors, tools in the hands of the intercessors, and uh, yeah. And Ralph, you've got something. Mm -hmm. From Psalm 83, yeah. beginning at verse 15, mm -hmm. speaking of the leaders who are not following after the Lord Jesus, right, but we... are looking after their own interests or, or being demonically distracted and, influence. and, yep. and influenced. Yep. So beginning at verse 15, Father, we ask that you would so persecute them with your tempest, your storms, as mm, Pastor yes. Ray likes to talk about, yeah. God's storms. Mm -hmm. So persecute them with your storms, mm -hmm. make them afraid by your storms, fill their faces with shame that they may seek your yeah. name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that you, whose name alone is Jehovah, mm -hmm. are most high over all the earth. And I love in the middle where he says, Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. Mm -hmm. We're not... Asking that they be destroyed, no, but that they no, should that change the Lord, mm -hmm. change Amen. the Lord that they follow. Nebuchadnezzar did that, yep. And so that was Psalm 80, 83, what verse 15 through 18. 15 through 18. Wow, God's storms are His mercies in disguise mm -hmm. to bring us in a closer covenant walk with Him. Not the devil's storms, we can cast them out, but God's storms. Mm -hmm. He's bringing correction. And, you know, uh, last week and this week, we're talking about prepare for the persecution, mm -hmm. prepare for a preparation age. In other words, prepare for that place where we need to be in holy, holiness and being set apart in the tabernacle and set apart uh, because of the, um, you know, the threshing floor is, is happening and there's a separation mm -hmm. happening. Do you have anything, May? I know you, you had brought some different things that were... Yeah, but I want Leslie to look at them. Yeah. Okay. And if, if there's... I, I'm going to... Uh, we're going to take a break, um, but I'm going to read something here, and then I, I want you to mull this over before we come back in the break. Um, and it's in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 13. Now, uh, verse 13 was something that uh, um, I want you to know Murray, uh, Murray brought to my attention and... and and of course, the Holy, but we were talking about this a while back, a number of weeks, a few weeks ago, in regards to salt and saltiness and so on. So, <coughs> uh, but it says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? So I want you to know this nation was found on God, godly principles. This nation, United States was found on godly principles and precepts and on the foundation of the Bible and, and the voice of God and, and so on. Have we lost our saltiness? Mm -hmm. Have we lost our saltiness? And do we need to come into a place of repentance? Do we need to come into a place that that needs the salt to be restored? So it, so it says, are, are you the salt of the earth? 
but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall how shall salt be seasoned? How can how do how do uh, um, is that possible, Doctor Don? That salt can get back some season, season taste. Yeah, you know. Uh, What's that? Boil up and let it, uh -huh. let it evaporate. Evaporate and crystallize again. Yeah. So both, there's a way that it can be done naturally, physically, and spiritually, right? So, so if, you've lost, if you've lost your saltiness, you can res be restored through repentance. You can be restored through uh, <clears throat> natural things that you can do to bring you back to the right things that you should do. Um, okay, so and it says, and it, it, shall it be seasoned? And it says, it is then good for nothing. You know, when you've lost, when you've lost your saltiness, but to be thrown out and to be trampled under, under the foot of men, or you know. So, I don't know if you if you've ever watched or you know, like if salt loses its saltiness. What is the good? What can you use it for? Yes. Is basically, huh? What? Melting snow on the highway. <laughs> okay. No, I was just thinking about that though. That uh, if salt has lost its salty and it saltiness, it's because it's become diluted. Okay, it's become diluted. It's watered down. So if your salt is watered down, it doesn't have much flavor. It has no usefulness. So you've lost your prayer life. You've lost your prayer life. You, uh, you've you, lost you've your minimized the blood of Jesus. Yep. You've lost your. Uh, You're uh, listening to man and not to God. Yep. Usefulness. You're not reading the Word of God. You're not being inspired by the Word of God. Amen. You water Where does your help come from? Okay. All right. So now, verse fourteen, it says, and it says, and it's just after this, it says. You did have saltiness, yeah, okay, man. but it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill that cannot be hidden. That was prophesied over us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was many prophesied years ago. many years ago. I'm talking about 14. That was prophesied over us by Prophet, uh, you know, uh, Kirk Duncan and yeah. Pastor Charlotte Baker and a prophet from... Uh, Alaska and one from California that that was part of a presbytery, and we've got it. We still got the tape. So it says, "You're a city that is set on a hill that cannot that cannot be hidden." Wow. In other words, if the if the if if the if the Church of God has fallen asleep, you've lost your saltiness, and you need to get into the light. Mm -hmm. So that you are in the gates to protect the people in the city, in the town. Because they might, may, they may not know what it means to be a son and daughter of the Most High. But we can stand in the gap. We can protect them until they do. Amen. That's what Jesus did. He came in and gave his... his, his he, 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 he is that salt that came. To bring life and life abundantly. To taste well. He brought the light. And it says, nor do, they, nor do they light a lamp, light a lamp, and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, that it gives light to all who are in the house. All who are in the house. God is in the house. If you are in the sanctuary, if you are in God's house, and it's lost its saltiness, and has no light, God is going to do something. God's storms are his mercies in disguise to bring the salt back and to bring the light back to waken everybody up. Boom! Amen. Oh. In the house, and let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and the glory and glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, it's all about The blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You love not your lives until your death. And I'm going to continue regardless of what. Regardless of what, I'm going to continue. So we're going to take a five-minute break. Whatever. Okay, back to Leslie. For just a minute. Okay.
um, you know, <clears throat> in um, in Second Peter chapter three, verses eight and nine, and in this translation, the way it reads is, "Don't imagine, dear friends, that God's timetable is the same as ours." We were talking about the times and the seasons, and um, and as the psalm says, "For with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day." But verse nine, now the Lord is not slow about enacting His promise. Slow to, as is how some people want to characterize it. No, He is not slow, but patient and merciful to you, not wanting anyone to be destroyed, but wanting everyone to turn away from following His own path or the path of you know the the, the slippery slope, the path, and then to turn towards God. So He absolutely does not want anyone to perish or to be lost but ultimately that each person is given it, every person, every human is is given the opportunity to turn away from the old path Amen. and to come un, and turn towards God and walk in his path Amen. and so we just say Lord no matter what we all see around us, no matter what the you know the uh, the issues of the day are that plague us so to speak we can use that term plague as in plaguing God's people, plaguing, you know, society. Um, but Lord, no matter what that is, you are still fighting for us. You are still standing in the gap and you want no one to be destroyed. So Lord, we just say for each and every Thank one, Jesus. each and every one who has questions, who is bad, and the ones that have not yet come to know you, we say, Father, draw them by Holy Spirit. Draw them by the Holy Spirit Bring them to and introduce each one to Jesus so that there can be that relationship with Father. And you are the only way. You are the only way, the truth and the light in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So grab a coffee. Or we'll water, five. or whatever. Yep. Yeah, we'll... God is in yes, the house. Yes, I didn't get... I just okay. started...